Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bluntstone Arena. It's lunch here. What's an exciting game of cricket? Tasmanian versus Queensland in the Booper Sheffield Shield. A game of cricket. We've got a bit of rain, unfortunately, which has just hampered the game, but we're certainly here with the cricket show once again, joined by Sandy Rogers. Great yeah, to mate. be here, Flash. How's things? Yeah, really good, mate. What's your take, just 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 briefly, on the what's happening on there with the rain? It was interesting. The, the, the umpire sort of left it for a few minutes. There might be a bit of moisture in this. Yeah, we're all talking about it. We could see the rain coming from the mountainside. We're on the east side here at uh, Hobart, where Blundstone Arena is located. See the clouds coming for a good three minutes, and it just looked like the groundsmen weren't in any hurry at all, and the pitch got pretty wet. It did. So we, the play is due to start back again at half past one. So a small delay, but back with the cricket very shortly. And we're joined by Queensland or Courier Mail, um, leading journalist in, ta in Tasmania today, Australia in general, Ben Doris. Ben, thanks for joining us. Gee, that's no rap. Uh, Queensland's no. leading journalist in Tasmania. That's a small field. Yeah, no, just, uh, I just feel that you're just entrenched in the Tasmania the last few days. How's, your, how's it been the last few days? I mean, you're not a regular visitor, obviously, to Tassie. And, um... Yeah, look, it's been terrific. I've got to say, I, I really love covering cricket down here. I've probably covered three or four tests over the years. And look, it's a fabulous, uh, fabulous place to come. I think this is the most beautiful ground in Australia. I mean, everyone says the Adelaide Oval is. I, I personally prefer it down here, and it's I'd probably be one of my top three or four grounds in the world. Yeah, terrific. I, I did see a tweet the other day. You said, sorry, Adelaide Oval, or something of that nature. Um, this is the most picturesque ground in the country. Yeah, well, Tasmanians love bagging me, and I love bagging them. <laughs> but in reality, I actually have a bit of a soft spot for, uh, for down here. My mum lives down here, and I come down here fairly regularly. So... I really okay. enjoy the place. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the game very shortly. The game at hand is very interesting indeed. We saw an outstanding partnership last night with Luke Butterworth and James Faulkner. Just as the game started to get away from, well, when I say get away, Queensland right back in at 7 for 270 and enter the two star all rounders yesterday and didn't they put the foot down? Yeah, it was. Uh, Luke Butterworth hates the Shield final. I mean, yeah. he's played in three and he's scored 102 80s, I think it is. So, look, he really brought the, put the game back in Tassie's favour. Now, with the game sort of meandering along, we've got the groundsman out on the pitch at the moment. Looks as though Tassie are in the box seat and I'm sure the Queensland boys will be quite frustrated with what's happened here leading up to lunch. Just to wrap up on what actually has happened in the game so far, of course, 419 was the total that Tasmania made yesterday. Jordan Silk, an outstanding 100. Back-to-back -back hundreds for the young 20-year-old former New South Welshman and he's had an amazing start to his career. And of course, Mr. Mr. Shield final, Luke Butterworth, again coming in a precarious position making 87 again. His partnership with Fulton, as mentioned, very pivotal. The bowling was just typical, as we'd expect, from the Queenslanders. Four wickets to Hopes and three to the Lionhearted Ryan Harris. But it was tough work for the Queenslanders. And of course, in reply last night, the first ball of the first in, or the first innings for the balls, and Ben Hill for now knocked the Mullers off stump out of the ground, one for none after a ball. What's happened this morning, the score now two for 59. So an opportunity now for Queensland to really grow. But the loss of Thomas Babich you'd imagine is a big one. Yeah, well, he was the one we talked about yesterday, playing a pivotal role. He, he's aggressive, he's dynamic at the top of the order, and unfortunately he didn't look to be that this, in this case. The, obviously the pitch is starting to play a little low. 400, it's looking a long way away. I've done some maths, I've looked up the Queensland batting averages. If all the batsmen from now until 11 bat their average, they're only going to get a total of 290. I guess that's an interesting point, Ben, and you're more qualified to say that than us, is with the uh, the Queensland batting, they've gone into a shield final, but it's been on the back of some real line-hearted bowling performances. That, and, and I guess the Joe Burns as well. They just haven't clicked right through, even though they're actually in a shield final today. Yeah, exactly. Well, firstly, that's impressive math from you, old mate. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, you're dead right. And Ryan Harris probably put a finger on it last night. Um, he just said, look, it's, it's a time for Queensland's batsmen to lift. They've sort of been the accidental heroes, the Queensland, the Queensland Bulls, really, this season. They've won two championships. They won the Ryobi Cup and uh, the Brisbane Heat won the Big Bash. But it's really been on the strength of their bowling performances and their batsmen haven't really stood up. I think Joe Burns is their leading batsman, might average 35, and he's certainly a good young talent. But they haven't had blokes really batting around him. So, look, I think to be any chance at all in this game, Queensland need to probably get a first innings lead, really, or at least match Tasmania's first innings total. Because on day five on this pitch, it's getting lower and lower. They wouldn't want to be chasing too many. So I think... Queensland, I think it, their highest score of the season has been 409 or something like that, so they're probably going to have to better that on a pitch which is starting to play tricks, so they're really going to have their work cut out. The temptation would also be, of course, Sandy, we, we talked about the, the, what could happen, and of course, on one hand, you mentioned they could go for the runs, but perhaps declaring 130 behind is another option. Does that give them an opportunity just to attack, maybe, and, and set a total, 
and, and just hope that you know Lionhearted Ryan Harris or James Hopes can do the business once again. Yeah, well, they've got to be aggressive, but you've got to keep in mind Ryan Harris has bowled 40 overs. Yeah. So is Hopes, and they're so both true. at the back end of their career. They're both amazing bowlers, but when you come into a Shield final, you've got everything to play for. I'm sure those guys will get up for the challenge, I guess, to take on the Tasmanian batters. Yeah. That, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, Qu Queensland's bowlers, they've been terrific, but they have really bowled themselves into the ground. And Ryan Harris has played three really tough matches in three weeks off the back of a year out of the game. So I think that was part of Tasmania's plan in the first innings. I don't think it was necessarily about batting slowly or trying to bat for a draw. I think it was just about trying to keep these you know, older Queensland bowlers out in the field. So just, just basically to gas them, so they didn't have much left in the second innings. Well, it, it got, you gas, yeah. During training this week, Tim Coyle spoke about, we had team meetings, keep the, the key bowls coming back, coming back, keep Ryan Harris coming back, hopes pushing to the wind, coming back for spells. Jordan Silk, he really did an amazing job to keep that happening for the Tigers. You mentioned about those, the Lionhearted performances of the Queenslanders, and, and I'm interested on your point on Ryan Harris. He's missed so much cricket, and we've seen just a wonderful performance the last couple of matches. It's really... I guess propelled uh, Queensland to be in a position to challenge for the Shield. And we're speaking of the Shield, ladies and gentlemen, we've got uh, we've got a special guest joining up very shortly. But back to Ryan Harris, he, he, he how much more has he got to give today? This 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 match. Yeah, look, uh, one thing about Ryan, he, he just doesn't give up. I mean, he could be playing injured, he, he could be exhausted, but he, he's just got a real heart and a real win to win, will to win. So look, I, I don't know how much he's got left. I'm sure he's exhausted, uh, but I'm sure he'll give it at all. And just on Ryan, look, I think. Providing he stays fit, I would have him in Australia's Ashes squad uh, for England for sure. I might sound a bit parochial being a Queenslander, but I, I just think he, he's zero chance of playing all five Ashes tests, but I just think he's the sort of bloke you'd want in your squad to play one or two. I, I don't like Australia's rotation policy at all, but I think it could actually work for someone like him to come in and play one or two tests. Just hold fire there, because we're going to talk about the Ashes. Really interested in your thoughts of what we do. So you've, had, you've, you've jumped the gun as a good journo would always do. <laughs> Can I just touch on something? I mentioned an old friend here, Sandy. And um, just down here in front of us, we'll get our good cameraman, Justin, look down here. We have got the Holy Grail here, ladies and gentlemen. That is that is that the best piece of trophy wear in world sport? Now, we're parochial Australians. We love our cricket, of course. Sandy, is there a better piece of trophy than that thing over there in the corner? That is magnificent. The Stanley Cup's a pretty good trophy in America, <laughs> but that is incredible. Yeah. I mean, we took all five of us in here to carry it up here. So I hope you appreciate it because it was a real effort. Luke, our IT man, still wiping the sweat off his brow. But look, that's what all the blood, sweat and tears are for. Everyone's fighting for that trophy. And of course, Ben, there's been a, a big restoration over the last, over the winter, winter time. The, the Shield, as you, can, as you can see there, it's got a real gloss to it now. But of course, the last time you saw the Shield, it had, um, it smelled of um, Forex, it smelled of Bogues Draft, it smelled of Tui's. So all the, all the brews from around the country of the last hundred years were somewhere embedded. That's a different looking Shield to when you last saw it, isn't it? Ah, oh, it is, and I've got to say, we've actually seen a bit of the shield in, in Queensland. It must be a pretty pretty rare thing for you to see it uh, as Tasmanians down here in the room. But um, but yeah, it, that that that's the truth. Uh, the old shield used to be absolutely uh, stinking. Like you used to, you could smell it from a mile away. It was soaked in beer, and I think it had um, <laughs> it had quite a bit of texture pen on the back with some swear words and all sorts of things. So it's a bit of a shame it um, it sort of fell apart really in the end. But they've done a terrific job to restore it. I think it cost them a packet too. Yeah, no doubt about that. Luke, our, um, our muscle man, IT man, assured us that it was three months of very hard labour and a lot of money spent. So that's the Shield, and it's a, it is a fantastic, fantastic trophy. Well, thanks again to Cricket Tasmania for allowing us to have it uh, on the show today. To the game at hand, and what chance, I think, Ben, we need to really start talking nuts and bolts. Are Queensland still in this game of cricket? Oh, look, they're not entirely out of it. Um, bearing in mind, it is a five-day final, so um, really we're not even halfway through it yet. Um, but having said that, I, I, gee, they've got a lot of hard work in front of them. I, I think the crucial period in the game might, might end up being when Tasmania, I think, was seven for 269 or something uh, yesterday, and it really looked like Queensland was going to get the last three wickets pretty quickly, bowl Tassie out for 300, and it would have been game on. But I just think that extra... 110, 120 runs they got might end up being pr crucial. It's almost worth, the runs they got at the tail end, I think, was almost worth, every run was worth two. Well, I think that was almost obvious across the game. You saw how deep the Tasmanian Tigers bat. My issue is, do Queensland have that down the bottom of the order? That 80 out of someone like Ryan Harris or... Yeah. Well, I, I, think they, I think they potentially do. Uh, Ryan Harris got a few runs uh, over in WA. Chris Hartley's a very good batsman. But I suppose the problem for Queensland is they're not only going to have to get runs, but they're going to have to get them pretty quickly. 
on a pitch that really is starting to keep low. So they're going to have to take a few chances. Uh, so, yeah, look, I, as, as much as I'd like to uh, be tipping Queensland from here, I, I am finding it pretty hard to. I'm interested too in your thoughts on, on the Tassie bowls. We mentioned the bottom, that tail end for both sides. And you look at the four quicks for Tasmania and Hilfenhaus, who's a bit of a tonker. We can get you 20 or 30, but... Gulbus is a recognised player. He's made 20 first grade hundreds, and of course Faulkner and Butterworth are, are stars at this level. As an all rounder, they're they're at the top of the tree. Yeah, look, I, I think Luke Butterworth is an absolutely sensational cricketer. I looked at his stats yesterday, and I'm not big on cricket stats, uh, but he just doesn't get recognised. He, he's underrated every year, but I think he's taken 200 first class wickets at an average of 23. Probably hasn't gone quite as well as what he would have liked with a bat, but coming in at number nine yesterday, scoring 80 odd, and. I find it a bit hard to believe that he's, you know, hasn't got games for Australia when, when other blokes, you know, such as Moses Henriques and some of these guys have. Well, I think Luke Butterworth's an absolutely sensational cricketer. I was interested yesterday because I was in the journalistic box and you talked to ABC Statsman, the great Rick Finlay, and asked him to come over and talk about it. And, you, and I guess it's not until you find yourself in an environment watching a cricketer like that who's so far away from everything, I guess from Oop, Tasmania, the bottom end of the country... And, I wonder whether sometimes the cricketers down here can get forgotten about. Luke Butterworth, the prime example. Stats amazing. Now averages 70 with a bat over four shield finals. It's an outstanding performance. Yeah, it is. I mean, I suppose T- Tassie's had a fair bit of national representation in the last few years. But you're right. I mean, Tassie, we always feel up in Queensland that on fringe uh, calls, on 50-50 calls, Queensland players often miss out because we're a bit out of sight, out of mind. So there may be... Uh, you wouldn't like to think there is, but there may be a, a little bit of a similar thing down here. I know, um, like, I, I write cricket pretty much full-time, and I, I, to be honest, I didn't know Luke Butterworth's stats or exactly how good he was until... Well, I knew how good he was, but I didn't know how good his figures were until I looked them up yesterday. So, you know, you can be a little bit out of sight, out of mind down here, I think. It's a shame because players that have had such a great first-class career, like Luke Butterworth, when they go to the next level, they perform. I think he's starved for that. He needs that opportunity. I think he would have had to have gone stale in patches across the last three or four years. Of course, it's great playing first-class cricket, but I think if you had had that opportunity, probably when Trent Copeland got his opportunity, I think that might have been when he could have gone the next level. Yeah, and let's not forget, it's not a sensational era of um, Australian cricket. I mean, we're not in a a great era. We're really struggling internationally, so you would like to think that there'd be chances for someone like Luke Butterworth. Um, Yeah, look, I think the stats, you know, really, really say it all. And if you don't mind, 85 batting at number nine. I don't, I don't know too many number nine batsmen in the world who can who can do that, especially in the pressure of a Shield final. I wonder with Luke Butterworth, of course, he's almost been a victim of Tasmania's depth of batting the last few years. Of course, they propelled James Faulkner up to six or seven in front of him, the young all-rounder who we think is going to be a star right across the cricket community. But Luke is one of those non-fuss characters, gets out of business, walks out the bat yesterday... And it's just like he's in a Sunday stroll. He's got blood like icy pulse, you know. He just, it's an extraordinary watching a guy like Luke Butterworth, a big game, just know he's going to control the innings and, and he's done, doing it with a fantastic temperament. Yeah, well, the amazing thing about Luke Butterworth, he's just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. So he's all about the team and I'm sure that's probably been to his detriment at yeah. times. Like Simon Caddish opening the batting for Australia, go back and bat three for New South Wales. He's almost that sort of character. And it's a shame that he hasn't been rewarded because... I think any team would be lucky to have him in their stocks. I think there's no doubt about that. We mentioned about Luke Butterworth, and I, I guess a, a short notice question for you, Ben, is the Ashes trip is coming up, and it's, and it's a big trip. And You're not going to ask me to name the entire squad, No, are you? I'm not going to, but I am. But what, what, my thoughts with it is, is what sort of formation do they go with? We know there's 17 players to go over. So you look at the figures and say, look, is there, six, is there seven batsmen, six quicks... Um, two all-rounders and two keepers. The spinner's got to come in there. How do you think they, they go about it, I mean, going forward? I mean, the, the Tour of India, we saw a good fight back overnight, which was terrific. Shane Watson captaining really well under tough circumstances. But what's your, what's your thoughts on the formation of how they might go about the, the system, I guess? Yeah, well, look, I'd, uh, I don't know, to be honest, exactly what they're going to do, but I'd take as many players as they possibly mm. can. They normally take a fairly light squad uh, for the Ashes, maybe you know, 15 or 16, but I'd actually probably do what they've done in India and take quite a big squad because the conditions in India can vary test to test, and this Australian side isn't, isn't settled. So, I mean, you, you could be playing you know, a team depending on conditions. One thing I will say, Steve Smith from New South Wales has copped an enormous amount of criticism over the last couple of years, and... I, you know, I've criticised him a few times as well. And he's perhaps not the greatest cricketer we've ever seen, let's face it. But I actually liked his selection for India because yeah. he's one bloke who actually can play spin. Mm. And he's actually done terrifically over there. And I think if he puts his head down in the second innings, 
uh, in the last test. I, I fail to see how he can't go on an Ashes tour. I mean, I, I don't know who really leaps ahead of him. I'm talking about it as a reserve batsman, I guess, for the Ashes. I, I think he's done, give him his dues, I think he's done terrifically in India. And, um, yeah, I, I'd definitely have him as a reserve batsman going to the Ashes. Well, let's break it down here, guys. Like, there's going to be two keepers going. A foregone conclusion, I guess, at this stage, that it'll be Haddon and, and um, the incumbent, I guess, Matthew Wade. Is that that's just a given? Yeah, probably. Um, and, look, I, they don't always take two keepers to the Ashes. So, I mean, they, they, could, just, they could just name Wade, I suppose, and, and fly Haddon over if there's, if there's any trouble. But, yeah, that, that does shape, shape as a logical solution, yeah. Do we see Sandy them going with one more spinner? Is it, or is it... I guess those types of conditions. Do they go with a Nathan Lyon or do they bring the kid Agar in? I mean, what, what's your sort of foresight on what might happen? I think there? they've got to stick with Lyon. He's proven over the last few years that he, he can do it at test level. So uh, just Lyon? Yeah, Lyon I think just Lyon. The quicks is what I'm, I'm interested about. I had a theory going into this game, Ben, um, that back to the, the game at Crux, which we're talking about, Sheffield which Shield final. I almost thought that Ben Hilfenhaus and Ryan Harris were almost in a bowl off in this, in, in this game. I, re- I guess the reason's been you look at Say they go with six quicks and there's no doubt Stark, Pattinson, Siddle and probably Johnson are almost locked. Jackson Bird gets back to full health. He might be the fifth. It, what do you, how do you see it? Yeah, look, I, I suppose Tasmanian viewers, listeners, probably won't like to hear this, but I, I don't think Ben Hilfenhaus is going to get another go for Australia. I think he's had two goes. Um, he, he's basically been dropped twice. Um, and he's had problems with his action at various times. He, he's bowling well here. Just but on I, that, his I, action looked a bit better today, I thought. Yeah, it did, but we, we've seen variances in, in his performance, I suppose, for three or four years. I think at his best, he's a very fine bowler. But I just, I, I don't know, but I just get the feeling that Australia, having tr- tried him twice and dropped him twice, I don't think they'll go back to him. So with Ryan Harris, you talk about the line-hearted performer and what he's done three back-to-back games here. How do you approach taking Ryan Harris over to the Ashes? Do, I mean, is he, a, is he hit and run quick that might play two or three tests? Well, I think when Ryan Harris is fit, he's probably the best bowler in the country. Pattinson at the moment, he's proven to be a real workhorse. But the thing I'm worried about, Ben, is Ryan Harris has bowled 40 overs this game. He's had injury in the past. Could bowl 70 overs in this game and then be injured and then be out. That's one thing that's got to be in the back of someone's mind out there, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. But look, I think if he's... The key to him is being fit, obviously. I mean, that's common sense. And they will know whether he's fit going into the Ashes. So they'll make a decision based on that. And look, getting back to what I was saying before, I think he would be a, be a perfect man in the squad to play him for various conditions. Like, I'm not sure if there's a test at Leeds. There may not be, actually. But, but if there is, look, the ball swings around there and it's you know, perfect for, for, for high-quality, fast bowling. So he'd be a great man to play there. Um, but, look, he's, as I said before, zero chance of getting through five tests. He's proved, really, history shows that he can't get through back-to-back tests or, or two or three tests in a row. But, look, imagine if Australia was 1-0 down after three tests and you could throw a fit, firing Ryan Harris in, into the team. I mean, I think Australia would like to do that. I think that's a no-brainer. To the game at hand, and, of course, cricketers often talk about the, the Shield final was the next best thing to test cricket, and it really goes up a level. We saw a wonderful contest at the Gabba last year, a tight game, which... Could have gone either way in the last day, of course. Queensland doing the job on the back of a fantastic Hartley 100 in particular, though, but McGoffin outstanding. What do we see out of this game about potential candidates? It's always a game. So do we see guys like a Burns putting his hand up today with more runs? Jordan Silk's been outstanding. The all-rounders, Butterworth and Fort we've talked about. Is there a Smokey, one, a guy that could come out of this game and from left field get a game in the... First I'd have to say James Faulkner and Joe Burns. I think all three, Jordan Silk, Joe Burns and Faulkner, will go on the Australian A Tour. And whether they perform there, that would probably be the determining factor if they get a smoke in the ashes. But speaking of Ryan Harris, you know, there'll be injuries. And Ben Hilfenhaus might have had his last test for Australia, but it's hard to rule out a fast bowler because so many can go down and all of a sudden someone that's had experience like Hilfenhaus has a good off-season may play next year. It's just hard to say. Well, have, you got a, have you got one of those quartet or even someone else that, you, that could be a, a late caller? Yeah, look, it's, it's hard to say. I've liked what I've seen from Jordan Silk this game. He's obviously got talent, but I mean, it's too, too soon to throw a 20-year-old kid who's only played a handful of games, you know, into an Ashes tour. I, I like the look of Joe Burns. I think he's got talent, but there's, there's been a bit of a groundswell that he could be a smoky. Um, and while I'm a f- fellow Queenslander, I'd probably like to see that in a way. Well, he's averaged 35 or 36 mm. this year. So, look, I mean, you, go, you can't call yourself unlucky if you miss out on an Ashes tour if you've only averaged 35 or 36. Ben, what about Chris Rogers? Yeah, I think the boat sailed there. I, th- I think... I um, <laughs> don't quite know how to put this, <laughs> but I actually covered uh, Chris Rogers' only test in Perth. I think Matthew Hayden was, was out injured, and, and he's certainly a quality player. 
but I think there's been some uh, problems with uh, perhaps uh, team harmony might be the best way to say it. I, I think he's he's viewed in some sections as, as yeah, he's, he's, I think just, just just a few people in Australian cricket off Chris Rogers, which is a shame because he, he's a terrific player. No doubt about that. 35 years years of age, nearly 20,000 first class runs. He's been outstanding this year and another terrific year to Chris Rogers. The game at hand. So getting back to this, what we're talking about now, two for 59. Uh, Darren Lehman's in there talking with the troops and obviously with the senior players, Chris Hartley, James Hopes, Ryan Harris, etc. What can they do to conjure up a, a tactic now, straight after lunch, to get themselves back into the game? Well, firstly, they're going to have to assess the conditions of the pitch. I think a little bit of moisture may actually not do a lot of harm to the wicket. Might get a bit more consistent bounce. But once they assess it, they've got to be aggressive. And whether it's coming off, they may have to declare behind to try and get, obviously, the bowlers to clean up Tassie for a small total and then go for it on day five. But needs a quick assessment and then aggressive in whatever path they take. Speaking of a quick assessment, as we talked about before, it would have been nice if the uh, umpires and the groundsmen had made a quick assessment when they <laughs> saw the rain shower coming over the uh, Derwent River. Uh, Blind Freddie could have seen there was a huge shower on the way and... Um, uh, for my mind, it just took too long to cover that pitch. So, I mean, look, it probably won't play any great outcome in the you know, result of this match, but if I was a Queensland player, I'd, I'd be a bit annoyed at the moment. I don't think one minute of deluge hopefully will have much effect on the wicket too. They've certainly um, battled their conditions well this year. It's been an interesting wicket, and I guess I'm interested from afar, before uh, December, of course, it was a new block, and we they had a lot of trouble down here with their wickets, etc. Got up a reason, pretty good test wicket, I thought. The wickets here the last few weeks have been absolutely outstanding. Yeah, they have. Earlier on the season, we had some Ryobi fixtures here. Tim Payne got some stinking deliveries early on in his comeback season, which he, he liked to talk about in training in the change rooms. But the wickets got a lot better, and it's credit to the grounds. And we've had some pretty average weather this week leading the attack. They've obviously controlled the amount of moisture going to the wicket until now, Ben. Unfortunately, that was a very quick, quick downfall. But look, they've done a great job, and the wickets have been good. Uh, they've copped a lot of flack in the past with some test matches. I think the test match here... Was it last year, New Zealand versus Australia? That was a wonderful test, although Superb. it only went a couple of days. But yeah. when you've got TV rights, you've got those sort of issues, I guess the game needs to go the yeah. distance. Look, I don't have any problems with uh, having a, a bit in the, uh, the pitch. I think batsmen have had it too good for too long, to be honest. And no, um, yeah. I'd actually prefer, like as long as it's uh, you know, not unplayable, I'd actually prefer a pitch with a bit in it to a, to a road. If uh, Queensland's leading journalists could just pop into the Queensland rooms now... What would your advice be to the to the Queensland group just going into this second session today? Well, look, I think they've got nothing to lose, really. They've just got to be aggressive from here. They've got to take a... I mean, you know, a draw will get them nowhere. So they've got to go out, and I know it'll be hard, but they've got, to, they've got to try and hit boundaries, really. They've got to try and score quickly. If they lose wickets, so be it. But I think they've got to be try and be aggressive and take the game on. I'm interested in your view of Tasmania cricket with the, the younger guys that uh, could actually get that opportunity. We've touched on that with a possible Ashes Ash selection coming up. When you watch Jordan Silk the last few days, and you, you obviously don't know a lot about him, he's played the three games, you would have seen him up at the Gabba last, a couple of weeks ago. Is it, it's a phenomenal story that a young guy can come into this quickly and do what he's done, averaging 80 in, in cricket. And, and the flip side, another one that New South Wales has sort of missed along the way. Yeah, how bad's New South Wales cricket going? Everyone's, a, soon the cleaners will be leaving and going to other states. But, uh, yeah, look, he's, he's, um, he's certainly uh, got, uh, got a lot of potential. I've got to say, I would have liked to have seen him bat just a little quicker at times during his innings. I was dozing off a little bit. But having said that, good on him. I mean, like, for a 20-year-old kid um, playing, playing a Shield final, like, all the pressure in the world, some huge names, Ricky Ponning in his dressing room, you know, on TV. Um, I'm assuming this is probably the first time he's played in a, in a TV game. Um, you know, good on him, really. Except for the live stream on Cricket Australia last week, which was very exciting. <laughs> Had some dramas for this game, unfortunately. With Jordan Silk, you talked about his pace and what have you, but what we saw is the versatility of Jordan Silk last game. First innings, he got a half century off probably 200 balls. The second innings, 120 or 30 off 180 or 90 balls. So he, he does have a lot of versatility that, that's probably going to get him a long way going in the future. I'm a huge fan of Jordan Silk, but Ben's right. He wasn't bringing the crowds back, but he was playing a role for the team. They talked about it during training, during the week, that to settle the nerves in the sheds, George Bailey never started down the order. No one wants to be in early facing Ryan Harris with the new ball when you're hoping that the opening batters are going to do the work. So, look, yeah, Jordan Silk, I play club cricket with, with him down here, Ben, and he's, he's actually a very aggressive player, and he, he's obviously showing some composure to be able to do this at the top level. He's a bit of Luke Butterworth, ice in the, blood, ice in the veins. I'll, I'll put an interesting question to you, lads. 
I actually think that this Tasmanian side is so strong, it could beat the current Australian side. Well, Ben, that is a big uh, announcement from a perennial um, person well, that's had a bit to do with Tassie you, that's, that's, a, that's a good call. You, you have a look at them. They bat yeah. down the number nine. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, the batting is certainly the strength. But, I mean, have a look at some of the names on the Tasmanian side. And the Australian test side, it's not exactly setting the world on fire. I think it would be a very good game between Tasmania and Australia. I, I think we'd get knocked over in India not playing <laughs> a spinner. <laughs> Yeah, if, well, if, if you played at uh, Blundstone Arena, I think you'd be a good chance. <laughs> Fantastic to have you here with us today, Ben. We've enjoyed your insight, and uh, as you mentioned, you're a, you're a closet Tasman. You've got your mother down here as well, so it's been uh, it's been good to have your time here on the Crew Chart. And any any final words? Any, any chance here for the Queensland? Is there realistically anything they can do? Yeah, well, look. I mean, I suppose trying to look on the bright side for Queensland. One thing they never do: they never give up. And they don't have anything to lose. They're, they're in a back-to-the-wall position. They've been in a similar position uh, you know, plenty of times this season. They were out of the, the Brisbane Heat. was gone from the big bash. They were 40-1, to 1, I think, with bookies at one point, and they came back and won the thing. Similarly in the right, Raby Cup, no one gave them a chance. No one even got... Uh, they were last, or second last, I think, going into the last round of the Shield and you know, made the final from nowhere. So, look, they do... One thing they do have, they do have a lot of self-belief, and that dressing room will still think they can win. I personally think they'll struggle. That's one thing that they've got going for them, self-belief. And is that, is that a, a, the Darren Lehman influence coming through? We saw it with the Brisbane Heat, that came from the clouds, I and mean, somehow they won the one-day final. I've never, yeah. I'm not sure how that happened. Is that, is that a bit of the, the old-school Darren Lehman, really, that, that in, embodies the group and, yeah, and ab- the self-belief? Absolutely, and I think this, this Queensland t- team is greater than the sum of its parts, really. I mean, it's, you know, there's no outstanding uh, performances from the team all year, really. Oh, Luke Pomsback was pretty good in the big bash. But if you look at their stats, batting and bowling, uh, and they've got quite a few bowlers injured at the moment too, actually. I think Ben Cutting and Alistair McDermott, uh, even Luke Feldman would have been very handy in this game. Um, but look, I, I, they're just a team that really, really sticks together. I mean, all teams say that, but I know this Queensland Bulls team, they go to each other's places for dinner at night, they go to the movies together, they go 10-pin bowling together. They might just seem like little things. They might seem a bit silly, but they really do play for each other. So they'll be in there still fighting and thinking they can win. There's no doubt about that. And they're a tight unit. And talking to a lot of the Queensland Tasmanian players over the last couple of years, that they're very, very close and tight rivals and fierce rivals. But the, the respect for both Tasmanian and Queensland cricket is something which really stands out. A mutual respect. And I think they genuinely like each other off the field. Plenty of cricket to be played, Sandy. Just finally for you, what, we've heard Ben's version. What, what do you think is going to play out for the next couple of days? Well, look, I think Tasmania, they were fortunate to win the toss. But they earned their spot to get here to host the final and they've outplayed Queensland considerably in this game so far. But in saying that, they're only two down. Look, I'd love to see a game on our hands here. Like I'm obviously in the Tasmanian squad. I want the Shield final. I want the Shield, our friend here, to be in the, the Tigers change rooms come Tuesday afternoon. But look, I'd like to see a bit of a fight from the Queenslanders. I think, like I said, they're a tight-knit group. Buff Lehman didn't get here by fluke and the boys, so look... Good luck to everyone home watching from Queensland. I've got one, sorry to interrupt, we've got one quick question for you. I don't know how long we've got, but uh, being a Tasmanian and in the Tasmanian dressing room, do you think uh, Ricky Ponning will retire from Australian first class cricket if Tasmania win the Shield? No. I think he will. There you go. In other words, we've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, I, I actually think he might. Ryan Harris is, is great mates with Ricky and told me during the week that he feels that if Tasmania win this final, Ricky may actually pull the pin. Interesting to see what happens, and the great lead has been outstanding for Tasmania. And he might have a role to play in the second inning. Certainly having a role on the field where Tasmania well on top in this Shield game, the Booper Sheffield Shield final. Just repeating the score, Tasmania made 419 in reply, two for 69. Play about to start in 10 minutes time. The rain looked like it's gone away, and conditions are very blustery. But hopefully got some plenty of good cricket. Sandy Rogers and myself joining you today at the T interval. Plenty more to cricket, to cricket to talk about. Thanks for joining us here on the Cricket Australia website. We'll see you again shortly.